Today on First Cup, we're going to do our typical quote thing, talk about some martial arts. I'm going to tell you about my weekend, why I'm so sore, and what's going on today. Stick around. We'll be starting 15 seconds. <sighs> Two, one. Good morning, everybody, and welcome. Today is Monday. It is August 23rd, 2021. My name is Jeremy, and this is my first call. Well, how was your weekend? I had a pretty good weekend. Um, what was Saturday? Saturday was a bunch of work around the house. Uh, what did I do? Everything from breaking down echinacea seed. Good morning, Stacy. To um, I relocated some some hangers that I use in the spring when I grow plants for the lights. Uh, just a bunch of stuff like that. Cleaned up a little bit, moved some things around. And then yesterday, this is why I'm sore. Yesterday, I did two things that needed to be done. The first one, good morning, Tommy. I cleaned up the first floor of the warehouse, which was covered in, good morning, Casper, various piles of whistle kick gear. Just as a reminder, I fired our warehouse. I don't remember when, because they were being really crummy. And uh, they sent me back. What I got back was just so lame. I, I almost, the cost of shipping it in was almost more, almost more than it was worth. Because most of what I have now is a bunch of weird sizes of shin guards, forearm guards. Most of you probably didn't even know we made forearm guards. That's how little they sell. Um, and... I didn't have good spots for them. So I'd been deliberating with how to handle that. Well, a lot of it's in big, the, the big garbage bags now sized up. So all that stuff's fortunately in the upstairs space and then swept and cleaned up the rest of it. So I could prepare for more raised beds. Uh, last Monday, we could go. One of the local lumber suppliers dropped off a big truck of two by eights to me. Good morning, Richard. Good morning, Dennis. And it was time to put in the first bed. I thought I was going to do it one way, ended up doing it a different way. And the place that I put it in order to keep it level went from, well, over the course of 24 inches, it was an eight inch drop, which meant we went from above ground to just barely below ground across this. So there's a whole bunch of shaping of the soil that I'm going to have to do. And you know what? I am exhausted. It was a lot of cutting. It was a lot of digging. It was a lot of leveling. I'm getting better at that stuff. I don't think anybody wants me to build a house yet, but I'm getting better. Hope you all had a wonderful weekend. I hope whatever it was you did you enjoyed it i also made bread i made uh if you follow me on on instagram you may have seen what was that like a couple weeks ago three weeks ago i made uh applesauce bread which basically was i took the regular bread recipe that i dialed in for my bread machine and pulled out the water and almost all the sugar and put in applesauce worked great well, this time did the same thing, but pulled out a little bit of the flour and put in ground hazelnuts off the trees out front because I'm trying to get this thing as close to what could I use to make bread, right? Like out of, out of what I have available. Um, not going to get any grain this year, but the test that I did on the quinoa seems like it's doing okay. It just needs a... Uh, more planting and be planted earlier in some looser soil, but I'll make some quinoa bread. Though I could make cornbread. 
the corn's not growing well this year. Corn and I don't get along. Oh, I, I brought this over to show you. So I mentioned on Friday I was harvesting peas and beans. These are uh, some of what I'm saving for seed. They're a little ugly. But you got pod beans and uh, snap peas. That's all that's in this tray. I like growing stuff. Businesses, food. It's what I do. Greg says, was it hot in Vermont this weekend? Oh, my God. Uh, well, you know, it's hard to say. It's I, I was going to say, well, take a look at my tan. But even for me, it kind of washes out in the light. Uh, yeah, it was brutal. Yesterday, by the time I was done with my project, and that was with coming inside twice for over an hour just to sit in the air conditioning and drink lots of water, I was I was a little spacey. Uh, without being, without it being TMI, I think after I came in, the when I was done, I had 48 ounces, 54 ounces of water, and I didn't need to use the bathroom for two hours. That's how dehydrated I was. With all the drinking water in between, it was, it was pretty brutal. Tommy did something sort of similar, but for for a, a more short event. Cool. Uh, Stacy says, "Yeah, brutally hot and humid." And Stacy prepped for four days of camping and sorted boards for next Monday's promotion. That sounds great. Did I have any ice cream? I did. Uh, Frank, I have plowed through the ice cream you sent me. Uh, it was wonderful. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Uh, what was the last one that I had? I don't remember. I don't remember. See, by the time I eat ice cream at the end of the day, it's, I've usually had a drink. And so I sit down and have a drink and I have some ice cream and I just kind of, ah, just have a full body sigh. Dennis drove home from the Outer Banks listening to the audiobook version of the Katana Chronicles in its entirety. Phenomenal. Well, thank you. Thank you. Casper had some matches. Sounds like you all had a great weekend as well. Now today, now some of you are in the Patreon group, so please don't spoil this for everyone else. Okay. But those of you in the Patreon group know that, what was it, about a month ago? We had a big name interview. It was supposed to happen. It did not happen. And it did not happen... Some of you may have even seen on social media some mentions of some things that gave you an idea of why it didn't happen. Some personal stuff with this person. Uh, this is a big name. And I got a uh, message from Andrew over the weekend. And he said, hey, Monday. Can you do it Monday? And I said, for this person, yes. Yeah. So I had a little gap in my schedule and it's been filled. So client stuff, kind of an off day interview with this person. And then I go to karate. I actually signed up for karate. I have a one month me trial membership to a karate school. So um, I'm going to admit it feels stressful committing to this because it's an hour away. It is in the opposite direction where my life is. My life occurs, for those of you who don't know our region's geography, where I live in Montpelier, pretty much middle of the state north middle of the state my life exists mostly here and north into burlington so if there was a class in burlington or a little north of burlington or over there or whatever wouldn't be a big deal this is an hour south that's a big deal i don't do anything down there there are going to be days where i have to decide am i driving two hours from what i'm doing in burlington or am I not going to class or am I going to somehow reskip? Right. It's it. I see complexity on the way and that started to stress me out. But I reminded myself there's no long term commitment here. I have a month to see if this fits in, in to my life. Do I want to go to this school? Is it what I want? I don't know any of these things yet, but I'm willing to find out. And I think so often 
I and everyone else have this uh, tendency to look for reasons to say no. I've got a bunch of reasons I could say no to this. But I really miss karate training. I, I miss this style of karate training. And that's why I want to be there. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, Slider's asking what style it is. Um, she, uh, Susanna's not in here. It's Shidoru. Shidoru. In my brain, I'm having a hard time locking on whether it's Shido or Shoru, but I'm like 80% sure it's Shidoru. So. Stacy says, find a local Panera or coffee shop down that way. I could. There is one three miles away. I could do that. But there's only so much work that I can do at a Panera. A lot of what I have to do requires the rig in there. This little thing, this little laptop that I'm on, there's only certain kinds of work that I can get done on this. But the key is that I'm finding a school and I'm excited about it. Last night, here's something worth sharing. This isn't gonna surprise any of you, but I am a member of quite a few martial arts groups on Facebook. I bet most of you are too. And there's one. And I'm not going to name the group only because it, it what I'm going to say is going to create a negative association with that group. And I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, even throw adjacent. Right? I don't want anybody catching any collateral damage here. And this group posted a picture of a person, of a martial artist, someone who's been on the show. And a and I, I looked at the comments and I've actually been doing this intentionally lately because I, I feel somebody has to and I'm not seeing very much of this. And I took a look at the comments and somewhere between a third and half of them were disrespectfully critical. Now, this picture was of a woman. And some of the comments were disrespectfully sexual. So you've got people disrespecting who she is and what she does and how she does it and being disgusting. And so I put up a comment and it said, what did it say? Um, I'll read it. Good morning, Daniel. I'll read the comment because where is it? The sheer volume of ignorant, angry, sexual and belittling comments in here is repulsive. You know what any martial artist learns before all the things you're degrading her for? Respect. And I picked up quite a few comments or uh, uh, likes. That's not why I did it. I did it because I'm hoping that if we do a better job of policing ourselves, not in this, you know, not, not in the angry back and forth way that social media has come to be but in the supportive, kind, respectful, you know, all the stuff that we talk about in our groups and on our shows, the idea that, you know, you don't have to agree with how that person does that thing, but maybe have some respect for the fact that they're doing that thing. doesn't mean it's better. doesn't mean it's worse. If it doesn't impact you, leave it alone. Let them do their thing. Dennis says, saw those comments disheartening if they're coming from other martial artists. Well, based on the group, I would be shocked if they weren't. I said at the very beginning of this whistle kick endeavor to myself, because there was nobody around them, martial arts has done too much for me. I cannot fail to take this opportunity to do something for martial arts. 
And what I'm finding is that the things that we went in for, products, you know, that's not what martial arts needs the most from us. It's what we're still going to do because it's one of the ways we make money. But I think what martial arts needs most is advocacy and support. Calling out of people who are teaching poor quality martial arts, but people who are claiming to be martial artists and are poor quality people. I think that is so much more destructive and so much more harmful than anybody who's fraudulently teaching pad self-defense technique. If you're a jerk and you are online as a jerk and you're being a jerk about martial arts to other martial artists, I will, I'm coming for you. That's just how it is now. And the bigger the jerk you are, the bigger my response will be. I have no problem. And I, I was, I was deliberating on this last night. Unfortunately, I didn't, there, nobody disagreed with me on this comment, but I, I would have no problem tracking down somebody's instructor and calling them say, you know, that one of your students is doing this. You okay with that? I'll do it. I will do it. <sighs> Let's dig into the quotes. Oh, here's a question for all of you. Should we have a separate Facebook group for this show? It would make it easier to pull comments or questions or whatever you want me to respond to for the group. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if I want the work of another group. So thinking about it. Slider says, the ultimate aim of karate lies not in victory or defeat, but in the perfection of character. I agree. And isn't that a, um, is that a Funakoshi quote? Sounds familiar. Yeah. The one theoretically universal attribute to be ascribed to martial arts over time through progress is the betterment of oneself. And yet the worst people in the martial arts community are the people who have trained so long they've forgotten. <laughs> Stacy says, I have a hard time keeping up with all the groups as it is. Uh, yeah, it was Funakoshi. I was right. Uh, Chris says, uh, their dojo kun says to seek perfection of character. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you guys. Guys and gals, y'all. <clears throat> Yesterday would have been General Norman Schwarzkopf's 87th birthday. And if I'm remembering my history correctly, Schwarzkopf was the one who um, was in charge of Allied forces, I shouldn't say allied forces, uh, U.S. forces, maybe NATO forces, during uh, Desert Storm and Desert Shield, early 90s, Iraq, Iraq, Kuwait stuff. And I have vague memories of him on TV just kind of being this big general guy. <laughs> Not a very good description. Ninety-nine percent of leadership failures are failures of character. I like that. What is the job of a leader? To get the best out of their followers. Different leaders have different methodologies, but I think across all of them, there has to be some inspiration. You can get results, but if are you getting the best results? Daniel says, sounds right. Storm and Norman. I forgot that nickname. That's right. 
Oh, Tommy's got a one here. To become good in martial arts is a good thing. To become good through martial arts is far better. I agree. One of the things I've had to work on through Whistlekick is my leadership skill. Prior to doing all this, I was not a good leader. If you go back, you, you talk to my the team of people I had back in the IT days. Most of them would not have said I was a good boss. Some of them would have, but most of them would not. Some of them would have said I was a terrible boss. And early on, I absolutely was. I fully admit it. And so when Whistlekick started, I said, we're not going to have employees. There's no need. And I, mostly because I was afraid of making those mistakes again. But time chain, time passed and I needed people. And so we started bringing people on. And now... I've had a number of people tell me the exact opposite. And what I've found is that the number one thing I did wrong in the past was not communicate clearly. Set the expectation, document it, give them any parameters that they need, give them context, create a culture where they're able to ask questions. They feel safe doing so. A culture where they feel safe trying things and making mistakes and giving them enough time to do the work. And then when things come back, recognizing the effort, even if it was in the wrong direction. I love what you did here. Unfortunately, uh, you built a car when I needed a house. Let's save the car. We can probably use that for something else. Okay, that kind of thing. And all of this came from my recognition, ultimately, that things move slower than I want them to. I can't move, I can't move the needle by myself very fast. You, you can't. It just doesn't work that way. And once I accepted that, things got a lot better. <laughs> Frank says, I didn't realize how relevant that quote would be this morning. Well, thank you, Frank. Then it says, there are those who practice martial arts and there are those who are martial artists. I like that. Oh. Go away, silly Windows thing trying to tell me the weather. <laughs> Anybody else have, I got to turn that off on my taskbar. It pops up at the worst times. Nope. Come back, Norman Schwartz got quotes. I either have to wipe my phone or get a new phone. It's being really grumpy lately. Or maybe there are some apps I need to take off. I don't know. Come on, let's try again. I really hope it's not that kind of a Monday. There's too much on my plate for it to be like this. I'm waiting for it to accept my passcode. All right. One more time. If this doesn't log in. I'm going to have to do something else. All right. I'm going to fire up Facebook on here and hope it doesn't crash the computer because, oh, by the way, this computer is kind of grumpy, too. Everything I have with technology is, like, on the verge of, like, falling over right now. My desktop computer is, like, four years old, and the video card is kind of suffering. Uh, when Andrew and I recorded last week, I think I mentioned this on the show, like, we were, like, two minutes from being done, and the whole thing just rebooted. It's not great. All right. But this is why Frank does such a very kind thing of posting the quotes or whatever he's he's giving us in multiple places because it makes my life so much easier when things like this happen. All right. 
Quote number two from Norman Schwarzkopf, you can't help someone get up a hill without getting closer to the top yourself. I really like that. You can't help someone get up a hill without getting closer to the top yourself. That's good. That's really good. Oh, and Daniel says, and now is not a good time to need a new video card. No, it is not. Although fortunately, the um, the end of the market, the segment of the market that I would be buying a video card would uh, would not really be a big deal. Nobody's using the kinds of cards I use to mine cryptocurrency. So let's talk about that quote. We'll probably do this one and then maybe one more. Whether you think of it as putting others first. Um, the slogan for Rotary, service above self, whether you think of it as um, helping others, knowing that or believing that the universe will kind of turn that back around on you. It doesn't really matter what your angle is. When you help other people, good things happen. In fact, there are entire business coaches out there, a whole segment of that industry, and they advocate your entire business should be prioritized, should prioritize getting other people what they want. Even if it's not the most directly, uh, uh, the most direct path to economic success. If you focus on that, good things will happen. And there are podcast coaches out there who say, don't even worry about monetizing it. If you focus on delivering the best content, people will eventually want to support you. We kind of experienced that, didn't we? That's what Patreon is. Patreon is came as a result of people knocking on the door saying, I don't want to buy anything. I just want to give you money. I like helping people. I do. I like, in the context of whistle kick, delivering these things to all of you, these mugs and shirts and podcasts and books and programs. because I hope it makes your training and your experience and your lifestyle as a martial artist better and more rewarding. Because I think that that makes the world better because you'll train longer and more and bring other people in to train longer and more. And if not, even if we never move the needle, we'll have fun doing it. That's the hope. It should work out. More coffee. And it's ironic, isn't it? If you focus on other people, you tend to get more of what you want. Hey, my phone woke up. Cool. All right. One more and I'll send you on your way. Any soldier worth his salt should be anti-war. And still, there are things worth fighting for. You can say that about martial arts. There's an aspect of the self-defense focused martial arts community. And they seem like they really want to get into fights. And it's really strange to me. I've spoken at length and we've done episodes about this missing piece in self-defense training of, okay, here's how you de-escalate. And I'm not saying nobody teaches that, but it's not discussed because it's not sexy. Sexy martial arts training is, is, you know, here's how you defend against a knife or a gun, or here's how you use a knife or a gun, or here's how you handle multiple attackers. That's from a training perspective. That's it. That's fun. It's entertaining. It's challenging. I've never been in a real fight. I mean, plenty of times it could have gone south, but I de-escalated. I think that's far more valuable, far more important. And I wish we spent more time talking about 
in teaching de-escalation. The problem is, to circle back to the top of the episode, there are far too many people in our community who their ego is not sufficient to let somebody else or, you know, heaven forbid, some innocent bystander, somebody who doesn't know either of them think that that person isn't tough. I don't care if people think I'm tough. Nothing, nothing in my persona, if you've ever met me, suggests that uh, my foundation of any point of my, of who I am is based on others' opinion of my toughness. We'll put Dennis's quote up and we'll end it here. The only fight won is the one avoided. I completely agree. I want to thank you all for dropping by. I hope you have a fantastic Monday. I hope that if you have a few minutes today, if there's something you want to do to support all that we do. Oh, hey, it's Monday. There's a Monday episode. Uh, you can go to Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. You can get in as little as two bucks a month. Goes up from there. The more you throw in, the more we're going to throw back your way. Or you could grab something like this mug at whistlekick.com. And you can use the code FIRSTCUP15 to save yourself 15%. Uh, what am I doing over here? Oh, yeah. Episode. Episode. Okay. Episode 634 with Sensei Chris Moulinier. Uh, we recorded this one a little while ago. I don't remember any specifics. I'm sorry. I hate that I don't remember these episodes because we record them at least a month, sometimes two months ago. Uh, but if it's coming out, you know it's good. When was the last time we put out an episode that wasn't good? Really? Really? When was the last time we did one that wasn't good? We try. We try really hard. So thanks for watching. Thanks for all that you do for the martial arts. Take care, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.